by the end of this show, and it won't be a long one, you will feel empowered to know that you can reverse and overcome anything that you have in your genetics. Let's go over it right now. Welcome back everyone. We're gonna be going through a very interesting study. It is called the Danish Twin Study, and I call it the Danish Twin Study Shocker for most people who believe that when we are looking at our genes, that they are somehow our destiny. There is a huge contingent of people, most of them in the conventional medicine world, that simply tell their patients that, well, there's nothing you can do about your high cholesterol, there's nothing you can do about your high blood pressure, or your blood sugar levels, or Alzheimer's, or any of the issues you may have, like autoimmune issues, they simply say, it's genetic. Oh, it's genetic, it's genetic. There's nothing you could have done, it's genetic. I hear it all the time. Well, first of all, that then disempowers the patient because they don't believe that there's anything they could have done or could do the, to this day to reverse it because, well, it's just genetic, and if it's genetic, you're gonna get it anyways. And that is one of the biggest tragedies going right now on right now in conventional medicine, is just basically saying that we are relegated to a life of sickness and disease, and there's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is wait to get our blood work once a year, and if it's out of range, to then hop on a medication. And then by the time we're in our 50s, a handful of medications. Cholesterol, depression, blood pressure, diabetes, whatever it may be, right? And so what I'd like to do is share with you the same research that I believe these doctors, that doctors in general should be reading to reinforce if those beliefs are actually accurate. I am a person who likes to challenge my beliefs. I like to say, is this actually the truth? Is this diet really the best for every individual? I talked about that last week on episode 2638 about protein. People telling you you should be eating a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Well, is that for every human alive at every age, right? Or could it be different for different individuals? There is something called bioindividuality and it's beyond your genes. So that's called your genotype or your genetics. There's also something called your phenotype. It is what you have become with your life. That is what I wanna share with you here today. By the end of this show, and it won't be a long one, you will feel empowered to know that you can reverse and overcome anything that you have in your genetics. Let's go over it right now. And of course, I will link up the study so you can check it out for yourself. Uh, this is a PubMed study. Typically, we're using PubMed, National Library of Medicine, as our storehouse for these. Uh, and this is not a new study. That's why, like, this is so important. Doctors should know about this. General public, this is not their work. They don't need to know about this. But this study's been done for some time. And very few of the people in this study are even still alive. So we have actually all of the data. I'm going to share it with you right now. Okay, the heritability, and I'll translate any medical speak as it comes up because I don't, I mean, it, it, I believe, it's my opinion, that things should be written for the general public as well. I just think that why shouldn't everyone be able to take advantage of the latest breakthroughs in studies and research? It's just, I, again, that's me. But anyway, okay. The Heritability of Human Longevity, a population-based study of 2,872 Danish twin pairs born 1870 to 1900. All right, let's get into it. The aim of the study was to explore in a large and non-censored twin cohort the nature, meaning additive versus non-additive, that means a phenotype versus genetics, like what was done in life versus that was just a part of you. And the magnitude, which is heritability, right? How much did genetic influences have on uh, inter-individual differences in human longevity? The sample comprised all identified and traced non-immigrant-like sex twin pairs born in Denmark during the period of 1870 to 1900. With a zygosity diagnosis in both members of the pairs surviving the age of 15 years old. 
A total of 2,872 pairs were included. Age at death was obtained from the Danish Central Person Register, the Danish Cause of Death Register, and various other registers. The sample was almost non-censored on the date of the last follow-up, which was May 1st, 1994. All but 0.6%, that's less than 1%, had died, leaving a total of 2,872 pairs for analysis. Proportions of variants attributable to the genetic and environmental factors were assessed from variance covariance matrices using the structural equation model approach. The most parsimonious explanation of the data was provided by a model that included genetic dominance, non-additive genetic effects caused by interaction with gene loci. I'll explain that in just a moment and non-shared environmental factors, environmental factors that are individual specific and not shared in a family. That means like smoking, not everybody may be doing it, eating a certain way, exercising, et cetera. The heritability of longevity was estimated to be 0.26 for males and 0.23 for females. The small sex difference was caused by a greater impact of non-shared environmental factors in the females. That means they didn't do the same thing as much as other family members, by a small degree. Heritability was found to be a constant over the three 10-year birth cohorts, basically 1970 to 19, uh, sorry, 1870 to uh, 1880, 1880 to 1890, 1890 to 1900, that's what that means. Thus, longevity seems to be only moderately heritable. The nature of genetic influence on longevity is probably non-additive and environmental influences non-shared. There is no evidence for an impact on shared family environment. All right, what does all of that mean? Here, and I think it's really amazing. So first of all, almost 3,000 twins came from the same mother, same genes, and we look at the genetics and then we look at, that's genotype, phenotype. Okay, so for the first 18 years of life, maybe less back then, maybe 16, they live with the family. They did a lot of the same things as the family. And then after that, for the next maybe 40, 50 years of their life, maybe a little bit more, 60, they had their own lifestyle. And they did their own thing. And this group, these group, these weren't just random people. They were followed specifically over the course of their life with how they were living their life. And then at death, what did they die from? And it's interesting because they didn't all die from the same things. And they also didn't all live the same lifestyle. Certain people with certain lifestyles lived longer. Certain people with certain lifestyles lived shorter, even if they were twins. So when we look at this, we say, well, what's the real difference? Well. From this study, it looks like 20 to 25% of longevity-based genes might be inheritable. So meaning like 20% of what you inherited may influence how long you live. But then that also leaves you 80% or so of day-to-day -day activities your diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, and success mindset, right? Or longevity mindset. Those are all things <clears throat> taught in the de-stress protocol that I've, I've taught about, right? So those things account for 80% minimum, right? And then if we look at disease, well, most functional medicine doctors I know and naturopathic doctors believe it's somewhere around 5%, upwards of maybe 10% of disease is genetic. Most put it around 5%. That means 95% is lifestyle. And it doesn't mean that you're purposely doing the wrong thing, but it does mean that you may not know it, but you've got digestive issues, or high levels of stress, or high or low levels of hormones, or heavy metals. I mean, it could, there could be a list of things that may be off. And if you don't know, well, that leads to then faster aging and inflammation. So what I like to share with people is this. It doesn't matter how long your grandparents, parents, siblings, et cetera, live, okay? Only to a degree. The biggest degree is 
how long will you live based on your lifestyle? And every year matters. I've shared, I just shared this on a podcast earlier today. What you do today compounds on top of yesterday, which compounds on top of the day before and the day before that. Your goal is to string together as many days out of a 365-day year that are healthy, right? So if you're missing, let's say, uh, two days, three days a week, those aren't healthy, okay? We're looking at now 100 unhealthy days a year, 265 healthy days a year, right? So more steps forward than steps backwards, good, right? But what if it was only one a week? Okay, well now if we look at that, we're looking at some around 40, 50 days a year. And so now we've got like 310, 315 healthy days and 40, 50 not as healthy days. Alcohol on those days, maybe uh, some you know fun flex meals, cheat meals, things like that, right? So what we're trying to do is not be perfect, but do more healthy things than not, live an overall healthy lifestyle, reduce stress as much as we can, follow that de-stress protocol, the toxin removal, all these different things, and you then don't have to listen to the conventional speak of the day that says, oh, well, if your parents had it, you'll most likely have it. If I listened to that, I would have rheumatoid arthritis right now. If I was diagnosed with it as a teenager, certainly I would have it now 25 plus years later, but I don't, right? So why don't I have type 2 diabetes anymore? Why don't I have rheumatoid arthritis? Why don't I have Addison's disease? Why don't I have POTS? Why don't I have debilitating allergies or insomnia or any of these things? Because I don't have special genes at all, right? If anything, I've got the methylation uh, defects, I've got the detox issues, all those things. So why not? Well, the difference is I, I listened to many great mentors. I read thousands of books. I studied these things. I got my degree. I interned around the world. And all that I've done is honestly, one day at a time, try to do my best. That's it. And that's why I tell people, I feel healthier today than I did even five years ago. And five years ago, of course, five years before that, and five years, years before that. Because it is my belief that you do not have to lose the faculties of your body, mind, immune system, or health as you age. There's no reason for that. I'm living proof, and I don't have great genetics. So whether you have great genetics or not, you have the ability to overcome them and achieve anything that you want for your health in your body. That means if you want to live to 100 years old, regardless of whatever your ancestors lived, you should be able to do that. But also, just because you had someone in your family live into their 90s, don't think that you can do whatever you want and live into your 90s as well, especially if it was a grandparent. There were far less toxicities, far less uh, better quality food 50, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, than there is today. So we just need to do a little bit more, but we can still get all these same great benefits. So I wanted to share that with you here today. I find these things motivating. I find them inspiring to know that so little of our genetics matters. And what truly matters is how we live our life. So regardless of what your PCP, your MD tells you that it's just genetic, there's nothing you can do, et cetera, continue to ask why. Why? Why do I have this? Why do I have that? Why do I have these symptoms? You'll be able to figure it out. You truly will. Hopefully the show was helpful. As always, do feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it can serve for this specific research study. And if you want to learn more about the de-stress protocol in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, check that out over at stephencabral.com forward slash 2643. That is today's episode and show notes. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.